and then we will get a certain and then we will get another function and then we will analyze what kind of function it is so this will be tagged in optimization channel so this was a case of discrete entropy and now we are going towards the differential entropy so in the case of continuous standard variable we will have differential entropy so consider continuous random variable x with the distribution px and the entropy that is the differential entropy associated with this random variable with distribution px is given by this mathematical expression that is negative integral over all the possible states that is negative infinity to plus infinity px log px dx where ln represents the natural logarithm uh, so this can be again maximized using the constraint optimization methods and we'll have to discuss the calculus of variation before considering the case of maximizing this function so this will be discussed in the optimization channel the proof of this and now i am directly giving the result that is these are your following constraints that is integral over negative integral from negative infinity to plus infinity px dx is 1 integral over negative infinity to positive infinity x times px dx is mu as the expected value is mu and your variance is sigma square integral over x from negative infinity to plus infinity x minus mu square px dx is sigma square sum of all the probabilities is going to be 1 this is the expected value of a continuous random variable x and this is the variance of a continuous random variable x. So on maximizing this function with respect to p subject to these constraints, we'll get the maximum entropy is received when the distribution is a Gaussian. So Gaussian distribution has a maximum entropy and this entropy is given by 1 over 2, 1 plus log of 2 pi sigma square so this differential entropy can be negative so differential entropy can be negative and discrete entropy is always non-negative so this I already mentioned this will be discussed in the optimization active project channel on cal and few lectures on calculus of variation will also be introduced as a prerequisite So now we'll have to combine all the information accrued in the previous slides and we'll have to use this information to derive the kullback lever divergence. There's, we already derived the kullback lever divergence but just few more derivations are left for getting the exact mathematical model of kullback lever divergence. So in machine learning we are generally concerned with the dis difference in the two distribution. So kullback lever divergence is used in the difference between the two distribution if you want to measure the how different the two distributions are you can use kullback lever divergence if you want to measure the statistical independence of two random variables say x and y then you can again use cool uh, then you can again use kullback lever divergence for this task if you want to perform hypothesis testing then again you can use kullback lever divergence that is suppose you are having a regression problem and you want to identify the number of parameters in your model so that you don't overfit over your data set so again you can use kullback lever divergence and and two most important algorithms in machine that is expectation maximization and expectation propagation they use kullback lever divergence so how are we going to use kullback lever divergence in the difference in measuring the difference between the two distributions so we will form a mathematical model of this thing will have to form a particular objective function for this purpose so now consider a ra continuous random or discrete random variable x and now suppose it is coming from the actual distribution its actual distribution is px okay that is you are having a random a random variable x and its actual distribution is px but suppose you don't know about the di about this distribution or suppose you want to transmit this information using another distribution say approximate distribution and you model it as qx 
okay so the actual distribution is px but you are modeling it as qx and now you are you want to measure say amount of error or how different the two distributions are you are sending a particular information and which is coming from distribution px and the receiver is getting this information in the in the form of distribution qx so you want to measure the difference between the two distributions uh, how different they are so you can use callback lever divergence for this purpose so therefore the so this can be stated as the additional amount of information that we need to specify x as a result of using the distribution qx instead of the true distribution px that is it is coming from the distribution px which is the actual distribution but you are modeling it as qx so the additional amount of information that you need to model it as qx is given by the callback lever divergence so callback lever divergence between the two distribution p and q is given by the average information needed to specify x with the distribution qx minus the average information needed to specify x as px that is this is known as a relative entropy or callback lever divergence so callback lever divergence is given by negative times integral px and then qx dx minus negative of integral over minus negative integral px log px dx and and this reduces to this expression that is negative integral px ln qx over px dx so this term is known as the relative entropy and callback lever divergence so to use the callback lever divergence for identifying the number of parameters in a regression problem we will deal with this thing in the upcoming lecture in say in lecture number 14 or 15 i, I guess and we will also consider the cases where we will have to find the distributions the difference between the two distributions say suppose we want to form a algorithm for continuous road detection in a video sequence so now we want to measure difference in the two cluster two road clusters road cluster in the present image and road cluster in the next image and you want to find suppose that whether this was a same road that we are following or not so we can have Bayesian information criterion or regularized Bayesian information criterion or callback lever divergence for this purpose. So these things will be discussed in computer vision projects and the use of callback lever divergence for identifying the number of your parameters in a regression problem will be discussed in machine learning section. So thank you for watching this lecture. I am Sanjeev from searchgain.com. Thank you.